Hi guys. If you grew up like me listening to great guitar music, you know, the sort of music that our parents enjoyed back in the uh, 60s and 70s, my mum won't thank me for that, then um, there's no doubt if you've ended up here watching this guitar video that Jimi Hendrix must have been someone you looked up to. For me personally, Jimi Hendrix was a character I idolised. He was the guitar god. He was the sound that I wanted to emulate. Um, but boy, is he hard to imitate. You know, only the best guitarists have ever tried to really do him justice. You know, the Stevie Ray Vaughan's of the world, the Gary Moores, people like that. And, uh, you know, some of them have even surpassed him in, in some ways. But let's never forget that when you come up with something from nothing, that is the hardest part of, of all of that. You know, the idea, getting the idea. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. I've been listening to a lot of Jimi Hendrix recently. You might notice behind me in the corner there's, there's a picture as well. I sort of refound my love for Jimi Hendrix. I'd never lost it, but it just wasn't at the forefront of my mind. And I remembered that, you know, I sort of picked up a few of his pieces when I was younger, you know, like all along the watchtower, the ones with the easier rhythmical elements. And I never really played it the way he did. I played like simplified versions. And I've never really been able to, to learn properly how to play any Jimi Hendrix stuff. But I would like to feel his that I've got some of his tone and some of his playing characteristics. You know, I've been working on that. And um, let me just start this by saying that any playing you hear in this video, well, it's not me. I'm not saying that I can play like Jimi Hendrix. But I'm sure a lot of you guys can, can play quite a lot like Jimi Hendrix. There's just one thing I've learned uh, in the last couple of days that has absolutely blown me away. And if it's obvious to you and you already do it, then fine, this video is not for you. But if you're, uh, if you're looking for another way to sound like Jimmy, then I've got something for you. I've been listening to my favorite Jimi Hendrix track, uh, which might surprise you, it's Voodoo Child, but it's not the slight return version. So um, it's, this one on Electric Ladyland, uh, and let's ignore Little Miss Strange, I mean, that's a uh, yeah, nightmare. Um, Voodoo Child, let's play the first few seconds. I don't know uh, if this is gonna get uh, taken down by YouTube, but. Okay. Those uh, first, I don't know, 10, 12 seconds of that Jimi Hendrix track, Voodoo Child, not the Slight Return version, are just probably the, the my, my most favorite Jimi Hendrix sounds, the ones that give me the, the goosebumps and make me want to pick up the guitar and try and figure it out. But I've spent years trying to figure out how to sound like this Voodoo Child. And, uh, you know, it's, I've been through so many different things. I just hadn't thought of this one thing. So in a sec, we're going to go over to where I play. I'll show you what amp I'm using. Uh, there's a pedal involved that's uh, really useful for this. And then I'm gonna show you exactly what I've done to get that sound. So come and join me. And um, yeah, maybe, maybe you'll be as excited as I am. Okay, so I was forever trying to get the sound here. And uh, maybe I'm just not smart enough. I hadn't thought of all the possibilities. Um, I sort of knew where this piece would start. <laughs> sort of thing but 
What I want to do is change over to a, a different guitar. It's going to be a Telecaster. I don't have a second strap, but that might be a clue as to why I can't show you what was going on with this guitar. Okay, so if I play something similar on here. just couldn't ever get that sense of ambience, the, uh, the depth of the sound, and I just couldn't work out what it was. But let me go back to the other one for a sec. I tried every amp I've got from my Marshall to my classic reverb signature, my Maz, you know, everything. Um, and I ended up on the Bloomfield Drive. But really, that wasn't the piece of the puzzle. I think any of those amps could do this. Uh, I tried so many pedals. I tried my Austin Pride Fuzz. I tried the Duelist, I tried the Vemuram Janray, and I ended up on this uh, exotic uh, BB preamp. But again, I don't think that was the final piece of the puzzle. In fact, in a moment, after I've told you the secret, we'll just put another pedal in there just to see what difference that makes. The big difference was actually just in the way the guitar is tuned. And uh, I'm tuning this guitar quite often at the moment because it's not used to being a whole tone down. We're used to thinking of Hendrix and then people who followed Hendrix like Stevie Ray Vaughan playing an E flat, which is great. The guitar sounds, this particular sort of guitar sounds great in an E flat. Just has an extra sense of depth, flexibility, great tone. But for this piece, for this piece that speaks to me of Hendrix more than any of his other work, something so visceral about the way he played this particular track um, along, you know, along with things like Machine Gun. I love that. I love that real Hendrixy sound. It took me a while, but I figured out he went a step further. It wasn't E flat, it was D. Now, that might sound like a pretty simple thing to have worked out, but for years, honestly, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> It makes all the difference. I couldn't believe it. The minute I put this down a whole tone, everything about this guitar changed. In fact, I love it so much, I might not change this particular guitar back to normal E tuning. I love... If you've got a guitar in front of you, set it to D, go and put it down there, you're going to find a few things change. Obviously the tone changes, that depth. Just get that depth of tone. It sends the amp in a different direction, all the harmonics are different, it's, it's so good. Listen to Voodoo Child first, get yourself in the zone. It's all, you know, it's pretty simple to get a flavour of it. I'm not saying I can play it like Jimmy, the way his fingers moved, it was just, it was like poetic, right? I can't quite get the tumbling feeling, you know, that he has. Um... If I turn off the pedal, the BB preamp, let's see what it sounds like. Man, I, I've never been happier with a simple revelation on the guitar, you know. From time to time you go through a plateau and then you come through the other side with a new piece of information that helps and in this case, I've fallen in love with this. Um, there's other things that it changes as well. It changes the way you bend and the way you do your vibrato. I mean, it's so easy to over bend. <laughs> But 
how Hendrixy is that? He often overbent notes. <laughs> And I love a good bit of proper B.B. King style vibrato. But with the looser strings. I just want to play everything like this now. You know, it sounds different. The BB preamp is just giving it that edge. You heard what it sounded like without it. You know, I'm in a lead channel here of the Bloomfield Drive, which is not a high gain amp by any stretch, and I'll put this, the settings up. Um, but, you know, I pushed it reasonably far. I've got the gain up quite high. makes me feel less shy to play like the way the strings feel the looser they feel and these are 10 gauge but 10 to 52 not 10 to 46 so they get thicker and thicker but I'm thinking I'm going to replace them with 11s or 12s try it out see how I like it I think I'll do a follow-up video but at the moment you know this <laughs> Um, so that's the information. That's the simple part of this. Tune down a whole step, all the way down. Boy, I'm, I've got goosebumps. I'm really excited. So I just want to change the BB preamp for something else. I think we'll try the Vemuram Jam Ray uh, and see what that does. Um, and then maybe to finish off, we'll just go for the Austin Pride Fuzz. I know you all like fuzz as much as I do. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so the Jam Ray is a vintage blackface Fender type sound, supposedly. That's uh, a bit much. I'm turning the gain down further. I had it on about 10, 11 o'clock, uh, <laughs> or as the captain would say, three minutes past 11. Uh, he's, he's getting funnier, isn't he? If you're watching, if you watch Anderton. <laughs> I'm happy to say, for your sake, I'm much preferring the BB preamp for this than the Vemuram. The Vemuram is a bit too hairy, even though I've got it set down really far. So let's just try the Austin Pride Fuzz. Let's see what a fuzz, a fuzz, a fuzz pedal does. Uh, I've got the fuzz set up. Pretty wild fuzz, let's hear. <laughs> That definitely sounds pretty Hendrixy, but it's not right for this. That BB preamp somehow is just pushing all the right bits. So I, I put the settings up on the screen. 
Um, you know, it's not a very expensive pedal, it's a hundred and something pounds, but this isn't a pedal video. This is all about the way I tune the guitar. So I'll just turn the pedal off. It's all about attitude when it comes to playing Voodoo Child. I honestly think that track has spawned so much of what we know in guitar music, you know, um, just the attitude, the feeling, the absolutely incredible tone and ambience of it. And uh, it's my favourite Hendrix track. I listen to it all the time. If you've been skipping by it or just listening to Slight Return, which is an unrelated piece of music, go and listen to Voodoo Child Blues, as you might call it, on Electric Ladyland, track number four. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, was this obvious? Should I have been doing this for years? What do you think of this tone? Did I get pretty close? Uh, something I'm going to be enjoying and playing with for weeks and weeks. So if you've enjoyed this and it's helped you out, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you know when a new video comes out. Uh, and have a good day. Cheers.